Happy OCP day, everybody, or I guess in my case, uh, OCP week. So initially, because I only have the one set, I was gonna come in on Monday, one October, rock these bad boys, and then maybe just put them off to the side. Uh, now that morale shirts are kind of uh, going away, because you know, no uniform doesn't do morale shirts, I was gonna wear these every Friday, like my morale uniform. Well, uh, I got my accommodation medal yesterday, and uh, it's with the training squadron, so, I was like, well, you know what? Uh, not only was I enlisted, my citation's gonna read as technical sergeant, and I'm gonna show up, not a technical sergeant. Uh, you know what, I'll also show up wearing these so the student airmen over there can see their future. They can look up and be like, man. So that's it. That's it in the, I was gonna say in the flesh, in the fabric, whatever. So, wore these again yesterday. And I thought, what the heck? Let's just wear them the whole damn week. So here we are. And uh, I guess you could consider this like the, uh, the break-in period. This is the OCP trial. And man, I am not disappointed. Now, there's a few pros. The first one being it's awesome. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a very scientifically accurate uh, or even objective statement. Uh, but there are, I guess, a, a con or two. Uh, the pockets and the pants, maybe I'm just fat, I don't know. Pockets of the pants are, are kind of small. Uh, I, I got one of those minimal wallets. And if it fits in there, fine, but uh, pockets can barely fit my hands. I don't have big hands, but uh, they're, they're, they're tiny, uh, those pockets. The uh, flaps on the cargo pants, though, a, a detail that I wasn't uh, aware that I would notice and appreciate. Uh, they're much bigger than the ABU flaps. At least they, I think they're bigger. Uh, I usually keep one pocket open. It's just a habit left over from when I was a, a technician with um, all my crap, my cargo pockets. I'll just leave the one button undone. Well, I still do that for my keys and for my phone. And um, it would, the flap on the ABU pants would sometimes get hung up on the button and it would be pretty obvious. And especially at AETC base, stuff like that's frowned upon. You're supposed to keep your stuff buttoned. And uh, man, with that flap down and, and as big as it is, it doesn't get hung up on nothing. So little things like that, I, I, I like. Uh, there was actually, speaking of uh, the pocket, and the buttons and keeping it open, there was a, a change made to the AFI that you can have your hat in your pocket and sticking out of your cargo pocket. It's totally fine now. You used to have to like shove it in there and hide it. Now it could stick out a little bit. Probably because somebody realized, what's the big deal about your hat sticking out of your pocket? Because I mean, everybody knows you wear it. You have to. Anyway, uh, the focus of this was um, to just be like, hey, the OCPs are cool. Uh, I thought I was going to be the only one on Monday. I was sitting here in the parking lot watching people walking past, and I was like, man, I do not see a single person in OCPs. But there's like another dozen, maybe 20 people here that are wearing them as well. Uh, a lot of people uh, saw the other videos, my other ones. Uh, I really do appreciate all the views and uh, the likes and the comments. Uh, I guess somebody uh, posted one of the videos to Reddit. Awesome. Whoever did that, uh, much obliged. I think I went from 2,000 views to like 7,500 views over the course of a weekend. It was crazy. I know what was going on. And somebody in my class was like, hey, you're Reddit famous. And I was like, no, nah, no way. Uh, so if that got the word out even more to people, then awesome. That's really all I intend to do is uh, just get the word out. Because uh, like I said in the first video, my, uh, my unscientific polling was that a lot of people didn't much care for the ABU whether they've been around for as long as I have or if they're you know a bit newer to the branch and uh, when when we heard about this just excitement just really drummed up uh, so to answer a few questions that have been uh, posted in the comments of the past couple videos uh, yeah the Air Force tape the name tape the rank and the flag that's the only thing that you are required to have on your top the flag can either be this Bagby green spice brown combo or until 2020 you can wear the subdued olive drab black cloth flag as long as you know the stars are, are, are where they are indicating forward momentum that is a uh, legal color scheme for the subdued cloth flag no infrared no full color it's either green and spice brown or green and black uh, probably because somebody out there realized, oh, there's a, a finite supply of these things. Let's open it up a little bit. I mean, that same logic, I think, was applied to the boots. You could wear a tan or coyote brown. And I think the shirt, too. It could be sand or coyote brown. And somebody was just like, you know what, let's apply that same logic to the flag. Uh, something I just read 
in the AFI. AFPC has put out a few new tidbits of information here uh, lately. Something I'm now considering, the name tape on the back of your hat, uh, it's initially Velcro, you can have this sewn down. It does not have to match your top. As you can see, my tapes are sewn down. Uh, I, I, I don't know, that's just, I don't know. Yeah, if I deploy with these things, I can't sanitize them by taking them off. But if I do deploy, I'm gonna be issued new ones. So I'll just go from there. Uh, if you wanna sew down your name tape on your hat, you can do that. There's a blurb in the AFI that if you wanna get your maintenance badge or, or your occupational badge sewn down or Velcro, you can have the option and it does not have to match. So you can have sewn down tapes and rank, but a Velcro uh, occupational badge, but there's no Velcro soft square here. So I don't know why, <laughs> I don't know why you would do that, but I guess the option's there. Somebody else in the comments had asked about patches. So patches are in the future and patches will be a mandatory item. The ATCI, not ATCI, wow, I've been here way too long. The AFI says that, um, patches will be worn by airmen and they will be issued did my screen go dark that's weird and the uh patches will be issued to airmen you know at no cost to them so eventually you will get a matchcom patch or a higher headquarters patch and you will get a unit patch the one the matchcom patch will go over here with the flag and the unit patch will go over here with any uh special duty tabs that you might have like ranger or uh, weapon school or something Something that I've noticed, though, that AFPC has put on there is that current permitted subdued patches are, uh, are permitted. So what I mean by that is this. If you were to Google uh, the USAFE patch or the AETC patch, subdued patch, uh, you would see what we used to wear on the BDUs on our chests. I'm reading that because that was or is an authorized patch, that we can wear that on the OCP. I sent my local PA uh, an email about it, and I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens. But um, it says in the meantime, while the Institute of Heraldry is converting these patches to the Spice Brown, uh, OD Green, Bagby Green, and Black color scheme, that these other patches are valid for wear. So I'm just, I'm just curious. I, I would like, uh, I, I know some people in PA, I would love it if they routed it up the flagpole just to be like, you know, hey, um, AFPC said this, is this something that airmen can do? So if you, if your base or if your matchcom or your unit, if you want them patched up, if you have a bunch of those patches lying around from the BDU era, maybe you can make that happen. I don't know. Uh, so for any of you guys that still have a lot of questions regarding uh, the OCP, uh, you can add them to the comments section. Uh, I appreciate you coming by and watching. Uh, AFPC uh, has a website. Just Google it. Scroll down to the bottom. It says Dress and Appearance. And then you have everything right there in front of you, including the AFI with the guidance memorandum. And the GM states that if it's included with the AFI, it's part of the AFI. And the AFI is law for those of you who are not uh, in the military yet. Uh, everything in the AFI you have to abide by. It's an instruction and it's telling you how you're supposed to do things. And so that GM is part of it. Now the GM is still a first draft. If you look through it, you're like, man, this is this is kind of written haphazardly or, or ambiguously. It'll get fine-tuned eventually, but they had to put something out there for those of us who are ready to wear these things. Oh, speaking of, okay. So if in case you don't know, yes, if you have multicams, if you were issued multicams within the past four or five years, you can wear those. They say, AFPC says specifically that if you have the OEF OCP, so the Operation Enduring Freedom Camouflage Pattern, AKA multicams, you can wear those. As long as you spice brown your stuff, you're good to go. So if you have multicams, man, join the club. You can wear those until 2021. I, I, I don't know if it says that, but like verbatim, but I'm just gonna guess that by April, 2021 April or June 2021 everybody needs to be in the scorpion you know what this is until then though if you don't have access to OCPs these but you do have multicams as long as you uh, do all this crap then you should be good or you will be good it says for a fact you'll be good 
uh, anyway, so I'm, I'm hitting 10 minutes and uh, that's really all I wanted to do. Uh, I did intend to uh, talk a little bit about myself, my OTS experience. This is my third take, if you can believe it. <laughs> and um, man, if you stuck it out through 10 minutes, uh, I appreciate that. And no, no groundbreaking information here other than um, just a few things that I've read up on that uh, AFPC has, uh, has released. The thing with the patches, I will let you know what I find out. And uh, if Chief Wright happens to be watching this, because hey, I was put on Reddit, it might happen again and he might get on Reddit. If you genuinely are, which I mean, Air Force Times reported it, so it must be true. If you are looking into updating or changing the Air Force service uniform, I want in, I want to help. If you're changing the fabric of the shirt, if you're changing the cut and the look of the coat, if you're bringing back the four pocket, four button, wide lapel, like military style jacket, I want in. I came in after the McPeak era, so that's all I know is this jacket, and all I know is the negative connotations associated with it, that we look like we, were, we work for Delta as opposed to the United States government. And with the Army doing this and then doing pinks and greens, man, it really feels like we're kind of following their footsteps, which we used to be Army Air Corps. So it kind of makes sense that, you know, we look at what they're doing and we're like, oh, that's actually kind of a good idea. So we're adopting the utility pattern, but we're making it our own a little bit. They're doing pinks and greens. It sounds like we might be exploring uh, changing up the service dress uniform. Let's change up the PT uniform a little bit. We'll keep the shirt, but I want the option to wear navy blue Under Armour shorts. I'll pay the extra money for it. I mean, how much are the trunks now? Like $10? How much are Under Armour shorts? $20? i will pay the difference if I can wear breathable Under Armour shorts with my PT shirt. I'll tuck in the shirt. But if I can wear those shorts, something that actually reaches my knees as opposed to halfway down my quads, I'd be happy. So, sir, chief, if you're watching this, first off, I salute you because you're awesome. Secondly, I, I, I want in. That's, that's it. Thanks again, everybody, uh, for watching this. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, keep it civil, please. Uh, don't be dumb. I don't know. I don't like seeing that kind of stuff in my comment section. And uh, just let me know what you got. I do my best to respond to uh, your questions and your inquiries. I will try to post a video soon on my experience with OTS and how I um, applied to the board and all that other stuff because uh, a lot of people seem interested in that. So uh, y'all have a good one. Happy OCP day slash week and uh, see you next time.